Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the show. My name is Rob. I'll be your technical manager tonight. Hi, I'm Debbie. I'll be Foley tonight. I'm Danica. I'm also the Foley. I play the voice of Sarah and the Angel of Death. Foley is live sound. Hi, everybody. I'm Audra. I'm the head writer, and I'll be voicing the part of Kimberly tonight. Hi, my name is Natalie. Hi, I'm Sonal. And together we form the graphic design team as well as the set design and costume design. And today I'm playing the part of Margaret, who's a lesbian nun. Hi, and I'm playing the part of Annie, her partner. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jacqueline. I'm playing the part of, I'm the voice of Jonathan, the altered boy. Hi, um, I'm Dave. I'm playing the voice of John the Peter Powell. Hi, I'm Lendo. I was the publicist, and tonight I'm playing the priest and adding on to Ezra. Hi, everyone. I'm Busi, and I'm playing Jonathan, the altered boy. Hi, um, I'm Shane, and I'll be playing any. <laughs> I'm Nicola, and I'm playing Kimberly, um, Jonathan's sister. Hi, my name is Tinas, and I'll be playing the part of John, so I'll be your pedophile for tonight. Hey, I'm James, and I am Sarah, the mother, and also the angel of death. Hi, I'm Pat, I'm part of the chorus. Hi, I'm Nicole, I'm also part of the chorus. No, I'm Oliver and I'm a priest called Father Benedict. Hi, I'm Laura and I'm voice chorus director. I'm Mike, I'm on guitar. Uh, hi, I'm Dave, I'm on violin. Hi, I'm Tari and your stage manager. Please can I have all your cell phones off? Thank you. Well, now you've met all the cast. My name is Drain. I'm the director for this evening. What you're about to see is called audio drama or radio drama. This is not your typical theater. This has all been workshopped from Monday morning, 8 o'clock, to the final piece, which you are about to see now. So little moments, mishaps, they are understandable. And what's going to happen is you're getting, unfortunately, not the full effect. Our Foley's, which you met earlier, Danica and Debbie, are sound masters. And in traditional radio theatre, they are the stars of the show. The reason <coughs> being is that all these little bits and bobs they have in the corner here are actually what's going to create the sound effects for tonight. Because after this evening, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, this will be broadcast from Arma. And those people listening, and I hope you listen in as well because you'll be able to hear yourselves, will be able to get the entire full effect. Okay. So what we've got here, your stage, these are your voice voices for this evening. They'll be reading the parts of the characters. On the other side of your stage are your mimes. They'll be miming the other parts. That's the connection between the two pieces. Okay, um, unfortunately two actors didn't arrive this evening. So, um, Jean, please John, can you play the part of the old tunny that sits in the corner? No, it's a bit short, Nancy. No, but like <laughs> all you have to do is sit in the corner and tune in that little <coughs> Oranya Sinachrens radio. That's, that's so, it. So I have to mind, I can't I've got to look old or... Uh, <laughs> no, wait! <laughs> that's safe. Now you look old. No. <laughs> thanks, thanks, John. Sean. Sean. Okay. Another problem, we don't have a policeman, so our demystifier Anthony, please, yes, please, please. Um, can you pay the part of the policeman for me this well, evening to, um, to voice it? I'm sort of police phobic. Um, this time, you'll be the policeman and not being chased after. Oh, okay. 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 Do I have to take my shoes off? Yes, I'd like absolutely yeah. delight, be delighted if you did that. The reason everything is carpeted is because we don't want oh, for the max. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, one more thing. Uh, do, is there any financial sort of remunerations for this? You get a hot dog later. 
<laughs> Great. Thank you very much. One more thing. Radio drama traditionally works on audience participation. That's you lot. So what we sometimes are going to need from you is um, crowd murmur or gasps and things like that. In order to do that, I need you to say this. All together now? Okay, now to get a mumble, I need you to go do it quickly. Okay, I need, I need peas and carrots, peas and carrots, peas and carrots, peas and carrots. Okay, go. Love you. Or if you're truly South African, you can say, Buena and Bortles. You ready? Buena and Bortles. I like it, I like it a lot. And then, of course, your general ones of applause. When you see that, you know what to do. Great. That's what it looks like. Fantastic. Right. Let's get to it. Father, for I have sinned. It has been three months since my last confession. I have committed three mortal sins and seven venal sins. But that's beside the point. Your parish is crumbling to dust, raging like Sodom and Gomorrah. Look around you. Look deep into your sheep's eyes, priest. My child? You've been ignoring me, priest. I told you last time. Last time? No. No, not you. You're not real. You disgust me. Where is your faith? You know, you know who I am. I am Azrael. Death. Not the angel. She's not the angel. Silence, oh. priest! I have not come for you. Yet. Your, your parish is Sodom. Your congregation, the whores of Babylon. Babylon. Oh, I see it all. Your, your nuns, nuns hiding together in shadowy corners. corners. But I find them. And your altar boy? Do you, you condone, condone rape, rape, father? What? What? You've heard the whispers. We came to you nights ago and told you, but you continue to do nothing. But I, I, I... I will give you three more days, Father. Make amends or suffer my wrath. What's your week at Varsity been, my darling? Hey, sis. Hi, Mom. Hi, Jonathan. My week's been hectic. I'm just really glad it's over. For now, of course. Ooh, dinner looks lovely. Johnny, are you okay? Yeah, I guess. Do you want to come try out my new PlayStation game with me? Sure, of course. Guess you think you can beat me now that you're 12. But maybe after dinner. Dinner? Come sit down before it gets cold. Johnny? Aren't you feeling well? Have you, you eaten something? Are you gonna eat? Have, have you eaten with John at the mall? Just, just try a little chicken, perhaps. I'm fine, all right. I'm just not hungry. Whoa, what's wrong with him? I've never seen him that angry. Did he speak to Dad or something on the phone? No, not that I know of. Johnny, get back here, Jonathan. <sighs> I just don't know what to do with him. I would have thought that spending so much time with John, his manners might have improved. John is such a nice, kind man for taking out little Jonathan under his wing. He's really needed a father figure recently. John, you mean John from church, the hairdresser? Yes, he was in mass last Sunday. He took Johnny to the movies after his altar boy duties. Aren't you worried about him hanging out with such an older guy? Why? Jonathan? Jonathan Smith? Oh no, not him again. Oh, uh, hi Mr. Murdoch. Where are you off to in such a hurry? Slow down a little, won't you? These old legs can't keep up with you. 
I haven't seen you in a while. Where have you been? Um, I've been around. I meant to come over again and say thanks for the new Delta Force PlayStation game. It's really kiff. I'm glad you like it. Don't worry about thanking me, though. We can plan something for later. Did your mom count on hard on you for getting home late? Yeah, I don't know why she gives me such a hard time. It's not like I'm a child anymore. I think it's because of Dad's leaving home, and she's having a really tough time. Moms, eh? They're really tough sometimes. You know, if you need someone experienced to come play Delta Force with you this weekend, I am available. Or we can go shopping and find clothes to go with that funky hairstyle I gave you last week. Thanks, but I don't know. I I'm a bit busy this week. Maybe some other time? It's no hassle. I'd really like it if you'd bring your PlayStation over to my house, though. We could have more privacy there, and maybe it would help your mom, you know? How would it help mom? Well, if you went away for the weekend, you know, spent the time at my place, she could have some time to herself. She could go out to the spa, visit her sister, or just use the time to relax at home. Don't you think that would be good for her? Yeah, I guess she does need to relax. I'll have to run it by her first, though. Good. It must be really tough not having your father around very often. I know what it's like. It was the same for me when I was growing up, you know. At one point, my dad was there all the time, and he was my best friend. We did everything together. Ate together, played soccer together, bathed, even slept in the same bed. It was really great. How old were you then? I was exactly your age. He was my best friend. Then he got this great new job, and suddenly he wasn't there anymore. No boy should have to grow up without his father, you know. If you come over to my place, we can do all the things I used to do with my dad. Oops. Gotta go. See you soon, though, Jonathan. Oh, damnation's in the seventh oh, circle of hell. I've left this woman's apron on again. But you can run along shortly. I'll come for you with my great, big, shiny sword. <laughs> uh. Open, come in. Hey, Kimberly, how are you? Oh, is it my little brother? Make yourself at home. And how did you get all the way to campus? Oh, I just caught the bus, and your warden, sister Margaret, let me in. I see. You have lost a lot of weight, and I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, I think Mom's cooking is getting worse. I just don't feel like eating. You don't seem okay. Is, is there something wrong? You know, I am your big sister. You can tell me anything. No, I can't tell her. She wouldn't believe me. She'll hate me if I tell her. Jonathan, speak to me. I can help. Um, okay. No. It's... it's John. He's a good friend, you know. Oh, John the hairdresser, the guy who helps with Sunday catechisms. Yes, that's him. Oh my gosh, am I really gonna tell her? I'm friends with John, but he is starting to bug me. Oh, okay. Well, if you don't want to spend so much time with him, then just tell him that you're busy. I sort of can't. I would feel bad because he buys me new PlayStation games and clothes and cuts my hair for free and he even gives me money. Johnny, just because he does those things for you does not mean that you are somehow obliged to spend time with him. Next time he offers you something, just say no thank you. You can do that, you know? But what happens if he gets angry with me, Kim? Why would he get angry? You really don't owe him anything, Johnny. And you said that he's just a friend. If he's a friend, then he'll understand. He just makes me feel uncomfortable when, when we're alone. But in catechism, he's okay, I guess. I just don't want to be alone with him, that's all. I don't want to go to his house this weekend. Why don't you want to be alone with him? What does he do to you? What has he done? Incredible, Margaret! 
Yes, it was, but I really have to go. They'll be waiting for me upstairs. <laughs> and they're always waiting for you? What's the rush? Why do we always have to pretend like it never happened? Mother Superior wouldn't handle it well. You know that. Or your delicate little Catholic church, for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're one to talk. What would your shul say about our three-year little secret? <laughs> well, at least I haven't pledged my whole life's allegiance to the shul. I'm technically over-breaking your rules, not mine. <laughs> and I'm not an Orthodox Jew after all. I don't get barred from my heaven for passionately loving the ten <laughs> Jews. <laughs> most delicious woman in the universe. Stop it, Annie. Your heaven? Do you even have a heaven? Jesus is the only way to heaven. <laughs> so you're telling me all the Jews who have died throughout history went straight to hell? Give me a break. And plus, how do you know what Jesus wants? Anyway, I think if Jesus was a woman, she'd be making passionate <laughs> love in the basement of a library too. Listen, I can't get into this right now. I'll try and see you later, baby. Wait, Margaret. Don't go yet. I didn't mean it like that. But I have to go. Well, you can't go without your rosary, can you? Oh, Give that to me. No. <laughs> Give it to me. No. Come in. Oh, hello, Kimberly. How are you today? You've been very distant lately and, and you're looking tired. Is something distressing you, dear? Yes, Sister Margaret. There is something on my mind. I don't know if I should tell her. I can't let people find out about this. It could tear my family apart. What's on your mind, dear? Ha have your studies been too much of a burden on you? No, no, sister. It's, it's not that. School is the least of my worries at the moment. Kimberly, as a child of God, do not fear to speak. His grace and glory will shine no matter what. What if it's about Annie and I? Could she have seen us? I, I overheard a conversation between Jonathan and a member of the congregation, John, the hairdresser, the other day. It wasn't my intention at all, but they were standing outside of my bedroom, and I couldn't help overhearing. Here, dear, I have a tissue. What did you hear, my child? Sister, I don't know how to say this, but I suspect that there's something sexual going on between Jonathan and John. Uh, John from the church? No, no, dear, I can't believe it. He's an upstanding member of the congregation. He always gives his time and money into the church and all the projects we run. He always volunteers for catechism on Sundays with the children. No, no, not John, dear. But Sister Margaret, you didn't hear what I heard. I know what it was. Jonathan is the victim here. Kimberly, my child, you are letting your imagination run away with you. I know things are really difficult at home right now. Maybe Jonathan is just seeking a father figure in John. And John is a good man. A good man? I heard him say some really disgusting things to Jonathan. You haven't seen the changes Jonathan has been going through. He doesn't eat, he's sullen, withdrawn, and he's sometimes aggressive. He's changed and it's all because of what that sick bastard is doing to him. Now Kimberly dear, I think you need to calm down. Think about the accusation you are making. John is a... A, a pedophile! What kind of good Christian man invites a child to go bath with him, sister? Oh my gosh, Kimberly, you, you could be right. He does shy away from adult company and, and take a great interest in children. But if it's true, what do I do about it? This could ruin the reputation of the church. The congregation will be shocked and, and John, he, he... He will get what he deserves. I'm sorry, but the church is not my concern. My family and my brother are, and I will do whatever it takes to protect them. God speed to you, my child. I cannot follow where you go. M my duty is, th is to the church now. Kimberly, to what do I owe this splendid pleasure? You're looking especially well, rather womanly in that dress of yours. Oh, actually, John, I, I didn't come here to get my hair done. No highlights or a blow wave today? 
I do have a great new shade that would really bring out the color of your eyes. Uh, no thanks, I'd rather not. Well, how can I be of service to you then? I was hoping we could actually just go in somewhere private and talk. Sure, let's go to the back and treat ourselves to a steamy latte. I could do with a break. If I was your father, you know I'd keep my eyes on you. A pretty girl like yourself should really have a chaperone. I think you have been keeping your eye on more than... I knew we had a connection that day in the church. I felt it too. John, step away from me right now. I know what you're trying to do. I like fire in my woman. But you like fire in little boys even more, don't you? God sees you and knows what you have done. Well, Kimberly, is that all this is about? You trying to pin your little brother's imaginings on me. You know that I'm a well-respected member of the community and the church, don't you? You know that while I suspect... Stop lying to me, John. He told me. My baby brother told me what you've done. So what exactly are you accusing me of? You know exactly what I mean. You've been molesting my brother. I'm going to take you to the police. Oh, really? And what are you going to tell them? That I seduced your brother? That he liked it? That he came back for more? But he's 12. How could you? Well, do you really want to know? When they're 12, it's easy. They're especially soft and subtle. And they're just so trusting, they even come to me naked. Do you want to know something even more special about boys and girls when they're 12 years old? They're bald. No hair, soft lips, just innocence. You're not going to get away with this! Oh really? Did you know that at least 60 children are raped in this country every day? And how many of them actually report it? People like me get away with this all the time. Do you really think a little, little Johnny's going to tell on me? Especially when he was the one coming back for more? Think about the shame you'll feel if you tell. You'll ruin his life. And I'll have yours in return. Hmm, wonderful. I, I think, think it's time to go pay a visit to Vist. I think it's time to go pay my priest a visit. Good day, Sarah. How's your family? Oh, very well, thank you, Father. By the way, where have you been for the past three days? Because, because it's time, time, priest. And still, still you've, you've done, done nothing. nothing. Wait! But you have to understand, it's not... It's Feeble excuses, you pitiful holy man. man. Your, Your deedless good intentions have gotten you nowhere. Since, Since I stepped from the Garden of Eden, I've been punishing, punishing men like you. But I haven't done anything wrong, haven't, haven't you? you? Your, Your hands are tainted with the blood of all those you failed, priest. The children whose cries for help you ignored. The families torn apart by your self-denial. And you will share in the punishment for these deeds. Unless... Unless... Priest, Priest, I'm, I'm trapped, trapped in this housewife's body. body. I can't go very well around. dispensing Prince divine justice in an apron now, can I? I need, need your help. But what are you asking for? I'm not, I'm not capable. Yes, yes, yes you, you are. are. Arrange a meeting with the man John. And then, well, I'm sure you can be resourceful. But how? I've, I've, I don't even know how to kill a spider. Do you really expect me to, to? Good heavens, Priest. Do you want me to hold your hand while you do it? I don't honestly care how you do it. You can poison him, poke him, or bore him to death. I don't care how you do it, as long as he dies. But my flock? My congregation? Why me? Would you want me to do it? Send this boy's mother to jail? Your congregation are done for already. Lessen the damage. You can still come out a hero. But if... If I get caught... Azrael, they'll catch me! Catch you? I'm discussing murder, and all, all you can care, care about is imprisonment. I promise you faithfully, friend. But if you fail me again, imprisonment will be the last of your worries. Besides, think of the vast congregations you can hold in prison, Father. Why, the possibilities are endless. <laughs> Margaret, hi. Annie, oh, thank heavens. Why, what's wrong? The, the priest, he's, he's, John is dead. The priest killed him. What? I, I saw him, Annie, I saw him. He just had the knife and, and he stabbed him. There was blood everywhere, blood on his hands, his robes, so much blood. It, it ran onto my feet as I stood around the corner. Oh, my God, did he see you? 
No, but, but I just stood there. I, I didn't scream. I couldn't move. I didn't help him. Oh, God, save me. We've got to leave, Margaret. If the priest could murder one... Leave? But the church... Yes, leave. You don't want to believe in this anymore. This isn't a church. It's a cesspool. So ditch the rosary and let's just go. But go, go. Go where? Anywhere, Margaret. We don't need to be here. You don't owe these people anything. They've betrayed you. They've betrayed us. My gosh, did you hear that John had actually been molesting the altar boy Jonathan? What, John the hairdresser? Yes, the fag. Human debris. At least he didn't have the nerve to show up today. People like that should be locked away. But uh, how did you find out about this? I overheard Sister Margaret talking to Father Benedict. Well, that was before she ran away with that gentle Annie. So it just proves you can never know. Can this congregation become any more corrupt? Having a homosexual affair under the roof of the Holy Father? Disgusting. And then running off. Here comes Father Benedict. I'm sorry, priest. It, it was for the good of my son. You have done well. Um, my, my children, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I've done my best to undo the evils under this roof of God. But for too long I did nothing and let our family tear itself to pieces. And now, it's too late. It's, it's, it's just too late. I'm sorry. I, I tried. I did as you asked, Ezreal. I did what you asked. Oh, God, what have I done? Father Benedict, can you please come with me? You have been charged with the murder of John Murdoch. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to legal counsel. You have the right to a phone call. What you say and do will be used against you in a court of law. journalism class is doing an audio drama in, in this vein. My answer is that I can't quite explain it. Um, some, at some point in curriculum development, I guess, you throw caution to the wind and just do things because instinctively you know it's the right thing to do. Um, and that's why I brought Anthony Sloan in to come and work with my students this week and just create chaos, really, and then to see where the chips fall. So I'll ask him to speak. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming, and uh, thank you for listening. Um, my, um, let me just say this. Uh, my theater company in New York has sort of lent me to South Africa for a long time. I'm the artistic director of a theater company called the Arisha Tales Repertory Radio Theater Company. And um, we have this thing of, of uh, we call releasing one's own magnificence. And what we do is, um, and what, well, I should say what these folks have done, is actually dug deep into themselves and and come up with this script in, in two days actually and then they got everything together and as you see this is the production that um, they've come up with uh, the the important thing is that uh, with radio drama with audio drama what you can do is uh, once you have the form you can put anything in it that you want um, and in that regard I'm actually attached to a DASA that's the Institute for Democracy in South Africa and, uh, and and I guess it's appropriate to be a, attached to a DASA because uh, we believe that audio drama, radio drama, is a purely a democratic form uh, because, as we say, you could be a four-foot ogre and play a leading character. So in that in that sense, um, the information that comes through and who brings the information, there's no sort of prejudice about that. 
So everything that you uh, that you import, you can sort of just um, uh, it just be well, it can be true. You know, you can get dig deeper, and it's a form that uh, everybody can engage in. So I want to thank the the uh, people at Rhodes for actually uh, developing this form a little further, and hopefully, um, especially in South Africa, when you are you have emerging forms of uh, of expression, that this will this form will take hold. I mean, because after all. Uh, you don't want to just look to uh, Europe or the Americas or even any place else. You want to, you know, create. We want to create our own forms that express what we what we want to express. So here in the land of Steve Biko, especially, um, we've we've created this, and hopefully we'll be able to continue it along. So I want to thank everyone co for coming out, participating, and uh, we'll see you real soon on the radio. <laughs> Thanks so much to the technical crew. <laughs> yeah. Does who moved this up here? <laughs> I was like, what's going on?